Hello, my name is Brian Lai. I am a filmmaker, artist, and educator. I live on the unceded traditional territory of the Sinaiq's people. And this video has an intention. And the intention is to introduce you to some stop motion animation techniques, mainly using objects found around the house. There's a little bit of paper and a little bit of drawing but the majority is object animation. The technical tools that I will be using today to animate are an iPad and a cell phone. The iPad has an app on it called iMotion, which is a free stop motion animation program. And my cell phone has an app on it called Stop Motion, which is also a free downloadable app. I've used homemade animation stands, which are used to keep the camera up and you can animate below. So all the animation I'm doing today is top down. So the camera's above and the objects are below and they'll move and come to life. What I love about animation is that you can take something that appears to be inanimate and um, show it alive. And it's quite wonderful. Welcome to my dining room. I would like to introduce to you the tools that I will use today. First, we have an iPad. It has a program on it called iMotion. iMotion is a free app that can be downloaded and you can do many things with it in terms of animation. I have my homemade animation stand which will hold the iPad and allow me to animate with the camera above and I will animate below. Okay, so we're gonna start animating. I am using a spatula, a set of nail clippers, a quartz crystal, and a frying pan. A very helpful tip when animating is to use the grid. The grid will give me a series of red lines that I can use as guides for when I'm animating and they're super helpful. The first thing I want to talk about is speed of animation and I'm going to demonstrate by having the quartz crystal travel across the screen in a few different ways. I always start with it just slightly off the edge of the frame and I'm going to use again these red lines to help guide me in my movements. The first travel across I'm going to make movements for every intersection of the grid. So it's going to be fairly big movements. I always like to take uh, six frames at the start, hitting capture six times. And that gives me half a second because all the animating I do is at 12 frames per second, which means in one second you see 12 pictures. 12 pictures make up one second of on-screen movement. So here we go. Another six. Now I'm gonna have it come by again, but this time I'm gonna do smaller movement increments that are half the size of one of those gaps. And one thing you'll notice with this software I'm using, it is a free software version, and you're limited by a few manual options, such as your white balance. So the color of the green towel I have behind the crystal kind of shifts through the automatic white balancing that's going on. Now I'm gonna do one that's even slower where I'm gonna divide those lines up into thirds. And what I'm aiming to do is show you different speeds. You also wanna be comfy because you are gonna be doing this for a while. Stop and have a look at what we've got. So the important thing to note here is the speed of the crystal changes depending on how large of a movement there is between photographs. Okay, I'm gonna do a new movie now where I want to make an object spin. I'm gonna use my friend the frying pan. And here's another situation where I'm gonna zoom in so you can see this, where these grid lines are super helpful. Let's just get this frying pan to spin on a really nice loop. Okay, so frame number one is there. And all I'm gonna do is have the frying pan move on an even amount around the grid. So I'm hitting up all the, the corners of the grid. And because I have it on this towel, it actually spins really nice. So I'll get a pretty, Nice smooth spin. Okay. 
And I'm going to stop there because I believe I started on the other one and there. So we have this frying pan that's just a spin in. I really love loops because they can just give you the opportunity to spend time with an object and see what it does for you when you watch something on an endless repetition. There's our spinning frying pan. The next thing I want to work with is the nail clippers. And sometimes it's often fun to look at the object you have and so to see, well, what can this object do? Obviously the nail clipper can do this movement. So I'm going to see if I can get it to animate itself and take advantage of all the, the little things it can do. Let them kind of guide where it goes and what it does. So basically I'm just doing small movements with it. And although this takes me a while, this is actually probably going to be quite a fast spin because I'm rushing it a little bit just to get it in there. And I'm bringing it to the center of the screen. And again, the grid is my, kind of my best friend when animating. Sometimes you might find you actually take a picture of your hand. I often don't mind that. Some people want to delete those frames. So let's see. It's made it to the middle. Let's just see what that looked like. There in comes our little friend. Kind of nice thing about the towels, it shows a trace of your path. Okay, now you want to go to the last frame, so it's important I hit this arrow. Up here it tells me I'm on frame 30 of 30, so when I hit resume, I'll continue from the end. Now I want, it came spinning up and I want it to stay still for a bit, so I'm just going to have it do a slightly smaller stop, and then have it come back a little, just as though it hit on the brakes really a bit, and it kind of wowed itself back. And I'm going to let it chill out for a little bit so it just hangs out on screen. It's always important to let your objects breathe and take their time, so I'm going to do six and then it's going to think what's it going to do. And I think it's going to try and raise its little lid there. And so let's see what we can do. Oh good, we can do a little halfer. That's nice. Let's see if we can do another one. So that'll be quite a quick gesture because it was just really done over a few frames. But And now it's open, so it's come up, up. And it's like, okay, well now what do you want to do? Let's see if we can make this part that just came open spin. So we will go here. Now there's something I didn't anticipate, which was the balance of it all. And we probably aren't going to be able to make it helicopter around because of balance. Well, then we can just have it fan itself. How about that? So it'll go like maybe. So the fun thing is you let, or I'm letting, the mobility that the object presents determine what it can do. We'll try and do that just a couple of times so that it can do a little wag. Now, because I'm doing this for demo, I'm trying to do it kind of quick. You can really take your time. Do very subtle movements, get really kind of smooth. Little, I've done this kind of little sporadic little wave, and then we want to have it bring itself back. So I like to let things exit. And then we'll let it travel out. I'm gonna have it come back and then shoot out. So it's just kind of like it's been spring loaded. see what we got there. So I'm going to be using my hand and having it travel across and reveal different things as it goes. If you don't have an iPad, don't worry. Cell phones can also be used to animate and they work well and they're lightweight and easy. So for my example, I'm setting up a very simple animation stand using some spatulas and soup bowls. And again, it's the same principle where I'm doing top-down animation where camera's above and I'm working below. In this example, I'm going to use felt markers and paper. 
And I'm just going to do a very simple hand-drawn animation where I have a couple of dots and I just make them get larger and larger with each uh, frame. It's really fun to play with drawing and you can make these dots grow and create quite a beautiful expression of color. So there's a lot of room to play with when you uh, use markers and paper. You can even cut the paper up, you can crumple the paper. But for today, I really just suggest you get some felts and do some squiggles and let those squiggles travel and grow and come to life. So thanks very much for watching this demo. And just to recap, things that we did today were looking at speeds of animation by really adjusting how much you move an object, looked at looping an object by using the grid and making something go spinning in a certain direction. We also looked at objects and tried to consider what personalities they have inherent in them and let that guide the animation, as well as using a little move called the hand reveal, where you have a hand swivel over an object, replace what's below it and keep swiveling back and forth. And then finally, this hand drawn animation style. So I wish you the best and I hope you find some cheese in your freezer. You're not so fancy.